kind so, of would actually prefer, I would actually prefer we do um, touch on it at the beginning and then go to the rest of the agenda afterward. But I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, you know, I'd like to hear what the other commissioners think. We, we promise we get to these other meetings. Yeah. Um, I think it, Mr. I Davis think, is okay with it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we touch on it here at the beginning. We just have to be cognizant okay. committee members that um, we have more time to discuss it on Thursday and we can't spend our whole time on it. We won't have time for other presentations. So maybe All if right. we do a quick and just be cognizant of our time limits. Well, in that case, then um, um, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and let Erica um, go with it uh, as a recap for the, our recording. The plan, the agenda for today is, um, we'll, we'll show it here in a little bit, but uh, it's basically was to go to have a follow-up on the infrastructure and facility projects, followed by a conversation on the ARPA application um, form and questions as part of the portal that we're working on, followed by grant opportunities. So what we're planning to do is sh shift that grant opportunities uh, agenda item from the third place to the first, okay? Um, Erica, why don't, Erica Hupka, Hupka is with our iParametrics, our consulting firm that is assisting us with ARP applications. So why don't you go ahead and share the screen and, and uh, she's going to navigate the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Now, the, a team of staff members from across the UG departments have been working on this. Um, they're folks from, of course, uh, Melissa Sieben from the County Administrator's Office. And uh, but also folks from the planning department and from public works and the economic development team. So this is a joint effort of staff that um, they pulled this together in the last three days. So go ahead. All right. So the state of Kansas um, would like to use some of their spark dollars that haven't been otherwise spent on economic development for the state. And so they have created this um, building a stronger economy or base grant to try to distribute these uh, funds to support local infrastructure development and to address economic development opportunities. So the goal of this grant is to try to generate as much economic growth in the state of Kansas as we can. The grants will have a uh, maximum amount of $25 million that they are allowed to apply for. And the state has also expressed that they don't want to put any, uh, they don't want to put all of the um, grant opportunities within one area. So uh, this is expected to be a highly competitive grant, but we have some amazing opportunities here that we're looking forward to putting forward. The catch with this grant is that we need to have a 25% match for any of the grants that we put forward. And these can come from private investment, public investment, um, investment in if we're looking to further expand projects that are already in the works any of the historic spend on those same projects can also be included within the match. So it has some flexibility with how we calculate that. Now, all of these grants, again, must demonstrate that they will help economic improvement within the state of Kansas and must begin within six months of being awarded and complete within two years. Fortunately, we are very well poised with our uh, departments to be turnkey on so many of these projects that we're going to put forward. So I think that, that gives us a leg up on some of the competition around the state. And here's a timeline for this. Again, um, we can make this PowerPoint presentation available to anybody after the presentation as well. Some of the examples that the state provided for us um, that they're looking for with this grant or to fund with this grant include um, infrastructure pieces that will help promote business growth and development, um, facilities associated directly with business attraction, um, such as parking lots and access, aprons for business parks, um, driveways and things like that, and then the infrastructure that we need to support all of that growth as well. Commissioner Bynum, do you have a question? Just wanted you to know, I've already heard from two community people trying to join this meeting and they're using the link that went out in yesterday's email that does not work. And then one of them is telling me that he also tried to access it directly from our website. I do not know if there's anything at all we can do about this, but we've got a link let, out here that's not working for the public. Let me contact the clerk's office. If they go to the website um, under meetings and events, and there's a, a link to the agenda, the link 
on the agenda is correct. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner, for bringing that forward. And so we'll generate the um, requirement or the application based on the requirements the state has put forward. Um, but the reason why we put this up here is so that we understand that the, the lift for this and the lift for our teams is not going to be minimal uh, for this grant, but we know that it's going to be a worthwhile investment uh, for moving our um, programs forward. In the current four projects that we've um, decided best meet the intent of this grant are the State and Village West Parkway, Indian Springs, Armordale, and the KCK Riverfront Park and Development. With Armordale, the commercial areas available there are prone to flooding. It impacts not only the business owners, but the residents in the area. And um, currently, the Army Corps of Engineer ha Engineers has um, work in progress that we can use as matching funds from um, the pump stations that they're already working on. On the riverfront, what we're looking to do is expand parking opportunities and again, increase the access to the area so that our residents and visitors are able to access and enjoy the river. For Indian Springs, we are um, looking to um, redevelop the transit station there and um, enhance community gathering space. For our State Avenue and Village West Parkway, um, we wanna improve traffic flow through that intersection as well as open it up for pedestrian traffic. Right now, it's very difficult for pedestrians to access Village West at that intersection. Mr. Bynum, do you have a question? No, just need to put my hand down. <laughs> okay. Now, as a summary for the funding asks for each of these projects, with Armadale, we estimate that the um, unfunded costs are about 20 million, which would be what we'd put in for for the grant application. The required match on that one is 5 million. However, we exceed that by about 10 million right now with just what we have from the pump station pieces and the investment by the UG. For the Kansas City Riverfront project, we estimate we need another 15 million there, and the match requirement is 3,750,000. So far, the UG has almost completely funded that um, with the monies that have already been uh, promised to that project. In addition, we have um, monies promised by our development partners as well, so we are far exceeding the match on that one. For the Indian Springs project, we estimate that we need approximately 15 million right now. However, we don't have any matching funds at this point. And the same is true for the State and Village West Parkway intersection, which we think would take about um, 250 million. However, we can likely use the KDOT investment in the 435 uh, interchange to uh, provide match for this grant. However, given the very quick timeline that we had to turn this around, we wanted to make sure that we were getting as much information forward as we can, and then we will um, try to populate the additional information as we have that. Thanks, Erica. Um, can, if you, can you, if you could um, go back to that? If you could go back to that previous slide for just a moment. So, in other words, um, the match that we expect to uh, come up with is with regard to projects three and four. And it's roughly 2.2, uh, well, two, no, $10 million, right? So that's what, that's what we're looking to in, in matches. And so, so of course there, you know, you can use ARPA um, direct aid money, or you can issue bonds for the 10 million. And so, or, you know, find it out of cash somewhere, but there isn't cash. So, so um, that's, that's where we are with that. So. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so was the fact that we had matching money for some of these projects, part of the reason they rose to the top of the list? So those top two, I'm just wondering if that, you know, how that played into yeah. our um, decision making. No, it, it did. No, actually, the the decision as they are listed here is um, completely based on independent of the dollars. Actually, this is a, a conversation amongst staff 
um, and the public works department and and uh, economic development and planning and that this is the ranking they gave the projects before they even saw the money yeah okay um I'm curious if you could, or somebody on the call, I don't know who's the best person, could talk a little bit more about the Indian Springs project, obviously outside my district, maybe I'm not as familiar with what's going on there. I just felt like the description was a little vague, so I wasn't exactly sure what we were funding. Um, so if somebody could talk a little more about what that $15 million would fund with relation to the Indian Springs site. It looks like Public Works is prepared to do that. They have their hand raised. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. This is Jeff Fisher. I do have uh, Sarah Schaefer and Trenton Fogelsong here. They're both uh, senior engineers and program managers for stormwater and wastewater. I'm going to have Sarah speak to Indian Springs. So I'll be able to speak about the um, infrastructure component and then um, if there's any other additional economic development or transit specific questions, um, I would like to defer those to uh, Gunnar Hand and um, Catherine. So for the Indian Springs, they're looking at the um, intersection and roadway through um, State Avenue that then connects to that particular development to entice um, developers and attract them to that space. We'd be looking at um, safety components with that roadway, beautification um, for pedestrian and transit um, to encourage the further use of that transit authority space. Um, the Transit Authority is looking at uh, redeveloping that particular space and building. Um, they experience a lot of um, flooding issues and um, other issues with just the location and uh, the development that's currently there. So that's um, from the in infrastructure side of things where Indian Springs um, scope would be. I don't know if anybody wants to address any economic development aspects of that project. Yeah, so um, one, one, um, one thing we could do is have public, public works um, talk about each and every one of these. You know, Sarah, you, you're very knowledgeable about all these. Yeah, and I don't know if other commissioners have specific questions. I just happen to, like I said, maybe not have as much history with that site, and it was unclear to me what was happening there. Um, Commissioner Davis? Yeah, can you all go back to the slide uh, for Indian Springs? That is in my, in my district. Gotcha. Yeah, I know there are a few uh, uh, possibilities in, in the works. Um, obviously, there is that signed contract uh, with uh, Scavuzzo and um, that uh, foodie park. Does anyone know from Public Works, have you all communicated with um, the Economic Development Department or planning to kind of just see how this potential project kind of works with that other Economic Development Project? Commissioner, let me speak to that. Commissioner Davis, um, so that's probably been a year, maybe two, the developer had requested that the UG consider making improvements around that site and, you know, street preservation, sidewalks, those corners of, what is it, 47th and State, those corners have remnants from past commercial buildings and that kind of thing. They were hoping that and then a new signal and those kinds of things. So I think that's the kind of thing we're talking about right now. Yeah, and um, through our conversations the last three days with economic development and planning, um, they both um, led this particular opportunity um, in, its, in its placement within uh, the recommended projects for its relationships with economic development, um, our matching opportunities with those partnerships, and um, our partnership with the Transit Authority and their goals. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And then can you all talk about the community gathering space? Just what, what does that entail? Right. Well, so um, I actually just learned about the community gathering space this morning. There's a small space um, that was included 
in its um, current form, but it is really too small to accommodate what is needed for that neighborhood. Um, I believe it can accommodate maybe 20 to 25 people, and I'm not sure if that was pre or post COVID, but either way, it's a little too small for the neighborhood um, neighborhood's use. So they're looking at um, building an appropriate gathering space, and Melissa can explain that further. So, um, Commissioner Davis, I think this is an important one to kind of give a little bit of background on. The um, current transit center, which appears pretty new, is actually riddled with a variety of issues from a structural standpoint. Um, we in, have been kind of inherited this problem and we're trying to figure out how to kind of rectify it. This, this has come up each time we've been trying to touch the site. Um, one, the location where it's sitting um, adjacent to State Avenue, it's, it's set way back. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of leaks. Um, the, the building itself is kind of rusting at the base. There is a community room in there. And that's what this public gathering space is actually referring to, which I thought it was outdoors when I first read this. So um, it's actually an interior room. Um, we haven't used it much at all um, because it's had mold, um, a variety of other issues. So that's, that's what we're talking about there. But at the end of the day, we think there's a, a, a better function that can be um, achieved that also helps open up the land better for redevelopment. Um, given we were trying to kind of work in and around this existing facility, um, there's some opportunity. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that I thank you all for providing that context. And I mean, th this space, um, you know, you all know this, you've been here longer than I have, holds so much nostalgia to our community. And we've been kind of, you know, sitting on it for, for, for quite a bit. And I know we have a current contract in place and hoping things, you know, work out that way. And so I, I see this as kind of an added benefit you know, to make sure that we kind of bring some revitalization. So thank you all for uh, answering my questions. I don't have any more chair. Thank you, Commissioner Bynum. Thank you. I was just curious, I mean, especially with regard to Indian Springs and, and this transit center, um, have we or will we outreach, but in particular, Greg Kendall at Wine.EDC, there is an economic development component to the base grant. Uh, Greg is on the call. I don't know if that is, you know, these haven't necessarily been participatory. Um, but last I saw he was on this particular meeting if we wanted to hear from him now. I think if, uh, as with the staff member, if he, he's a pseudo staff member, if he has uh, answers he can provide to our questions, I don't have any concerns with inviting him to provide those answers. I think it might, uh, be, you know, more we'd be thrilled to have um, Greg Kingsdale on the call. Yeah, yeah he's he's yeah. in the attendees, and I'm just I I, I gave him out. permission to speak. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. I'm here if you if you want me to answer any questions. I I'm not aware of the a lot of the issues around the the transit facility, but I know we have have been having some conversations about, um, for instance, the Cargo Town. Um, this is one of the locations that we had talked about maybe relocating their project uh, from Juniper Gardens, for instance. And so I know that when we talked with Eskin Associates, who's the larger developer on the North End, some of the conversations they had was really just about the UG investing more into the State Avenue corridor. And so I don't know how defined these dollars have to be, but I will say that what we hear consistently is that we've got to invest in this part of the corridor from the minute you come off the on-ramps all the way through the intersection, um, if we wanna really you know, uh, attract the kind of retail and multifamily development that we want here. Thank you, Greg. Ooh. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, all. One quick question. I heard a number 25 million and uh, my note said maximum amount. What is that for per project or the sum for this area? For the sum, you know, out oh. of the state of Kansas, what is the 25 million amount? So we're, um, from, from our reading of the instructions, it's 
25 million per project. So all of these projects, so for example, Indian Springs, it's only 15 million, uh, whereas State Village uh, West Parkway is 25 million. Oh, I see, per project. Yes. And, and, and they say that you um, every city can uh, submit three projects, but since we're a city and a county, we're betting that we can submit six. But we, um, as a staff, we only really identified these four that um, are potentials that, that would meet the criteria. So that's why we've got four up here. But we can- well, I think that answered what was going to be my next question. Is there a limitation uh, from each locality on the number of projects that can be submitted? So it sounds like we've hit at least for the city, uh, the maximum. Okay, thank you. Public works room. <laughs> so and in case you were just wondering if we were to do a bond issue um, for these last two, right? Because we have, we've already met the match for the, the first two. Um, so I'm assuming, of course we need your direction, but we're assuming that um, we can go forward or your, the committee's pleasure, we would move forward with submitting those first two uh, uh, projects. The question is the match on the second two, if you all want to. And so I'm just giving you a little information. If we did a bond issue for together with, for the two, um, it, it works out to $424 a year for 20, for 20 years, assuming a 2% interest rate. So that's how much the debt service would be if we bonded it. And, and okay. does the debt fund have the capacity within its existing mill levy to support that? Um, yes, it does. Hmm. Hey, Kathleen, this is Jeff Fisher. I don't, yesterday, it seems like there was a discussion about possibly adding the Quindera ruin site on here. And, and uh, did we decide not to, to pursue other opportunities or? So um, yeah, the, there was a, co um, a suggestion to add the Quindaro um, ruin site, um, but uh, in reviewing, just preliminarily, reviewing the, the, that project or those needs, it doesn't fit with the criteria of this um, grant, as we can tell, because it's, it's not really economic development driven. So, but we have identified another grant that um, is current, and, and there's going to be other grants coming up, but there is one grant right now that's uh, available for applying. Um, it's called TASC, and it deals with more with tourism. So, but, uh, but you know, we're going to keep our eyes open for uh, additional funding sources to assist the Quindera Ruin site. Okay, great. Thanks. Mr. Townsend. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, what was the source for the match for the first two, Madam CEO? Uh, well, this is Kathleen, the CFO. <laughs> and uh, you have them listed here on the screen. So the first column is the UG, you know, existing appropriations. Those in the past or current CMIP. Um, and then you've got state grants, you have a federal grant. Uh, which the Public Works Department can talk a little bit more about that 14 million for the Armadale. And then there's private developer dollars related to the Kansas City um, levies uh, and betterments of 6 million. So they're kind of broken up there. But uh, um, I think the Public Works Department can be uh, um, probably provide a little bit more information on those other sources. You see it? Yeah, I'm looking. I don't want to hold this up because our chair has already said we we have to keep it moving. So I can I can contact you offline about questions that I have follow up. Thank you. Okay. Right, and, and keep in mind we're going to talk about this again on Thursday. So there's a also probably another um, round of opportunity for questions after we've sort of dwelt on this a little bit. Um, so I think what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm going to try to sort of begin to bring us maybe to a conclusion. I think what I'm hearing is we have two that would require some match opportunity. Using ARPA funds for that match is a possibility, but what I'm hearing, I think Kathleen say, is that it might be more 
practical for us to bond that match because we could um, use the ARPA funds in other ways and we have the capacity to bond uh, that matching amount. Is that is that a good summary, Kathleen, of what, what I'm hearing? It is, it is. I mean, uh, uh, there is no better reason to I issue bonds than to, to match free federal dollars. <laughs> so the, the interest rate, you know, the interest rate, well, the return on investment is, you know, three or fourfold. It's, it's, so it's really, it's, it's really worth doing it. That's, I haven't had a chance to do the math, but I will on Thursday night's meeting. So. Okay. Are there any, um, from this committee, again, keeping in mind, we're going to speak about this again on Thursday with the larger group. Are there any overarching concerns in the direction that um, staff is looking in terms of the projects proposed? Commissioner Davis? Um, no, I think all this is great. Did have a very quick question. Um, exactly how much would be bonded just so the public would know if we were to go in that direction for full commission? So, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, so of course, it depends on the, um, you know, the estimates will continue to move, but if we were to issue bonds to, to match the Indian Springs and the state and village West Parkway, um, it would total this 3.7 million amount and this 6.2 million amount. And um, given an interest rate of 2%, it works out to $424 uh, a year uh, in debt service. Um, if now just, I just did the quick math and uh, um, if we were, if we were to borrow the full, for example, if one were to borrow the full, um, you know, the full $40 uh, million without any kind of, uh, well, it, it basically, yeah, well, I, I, I still got to work on the math, but uh, the interest rate is, uh, very low to begin with right now uh, in the, you know, we're very in a, in a interest rate environment where the interest rates are really low. And then not only that, but we're leveraging so much more in, in ARPA funds, you know, 75% more in free money that, you know, it, it's really a good deal. And I'll just give some more information on Thursday's meeting. I just saw that. And we will also continue to find additional match dollars. Uh, we just didn't have time to do a full deep dive into all of these projects. So hopefully we'll be able to come back Thursday with even more match available uh, so that we'll be asking for even less from the community. Yeah. Alan, did you have further response to that question before I go to Commissioner Bynum? Uh, it really is just kind of a clarification, I think. So in the in the base grant that the state put out, it's a hundred, they, are allocating $100 million from the base camp program. Yeah. And then there's a 25% match. So just in terms of expectations here, right. we'll, these four projects are the sum total of what the state has said is available through their base grant. So, I mean- Good point. You're not gonna get all of them in, in terms of prioritization. Right. You know, if we got one of them, we'd be getting a significant amount of the overall sort of state share. So just kind of right. keep that in mind that you know, in terms of the bonding costs and, and the matching costs, right. getting more than one is probably, I would say unlikely, but unlikely. So bonus if we get so one of the ones where we already matched. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't have a chance to look at this, you know, because they were putting it together really quickly. So yeah, Alan's absolutely right here. So, um, you know, if we went in for, you know, just the first two, because there's no match, um, you know, we'd still be getting roughly, you know, what, 4.4 million for the, in for federal grant money for the Armadale. And then, uh, uh, well, yeah, another 15 or 10 million for the, the KC levies. And we wouldn't have to come up with any more bond dollars to cover that. And that would make up because you know, the, the entire state of Kansas is allocation for this project is $100 million. So we basically um, identified their entire allocation, which is not unlikely that they'll, they'll give it all to Wyandotte County. So, so it's a strategy, you know, do we just move forward with, with uh, 
these top two, since there isn't a bonding or, or any kind of an amount that we have to come up with or and just focus on those first two, which are very important projects. So that's fine. Commissioner Bynum. Thanks. Since we, um, <clears throat> I understand on Thursday, we'll have a lengthy special session on the on the base grant application, I would throw a couple ideas out um, for maybe further exploration at that time. One being um, the federal government basically instructing us and the housing authority that Juniper Gardens cannot continue to be Juniper Gardens as we know it, and that change is coming. Um, per their instruction. So maybe looking at what might be done there. And then it's a little bit touchy, but this whole Reardon Center project that apparently is no more, uh, maybe we could not only have an explanation of how that came to be no longer a project, but if it's not, then is there an opportunity for any um, expansion there? Just a couple of ideas for Thursday conversation. Thank you. Okay. So one thing I did want to share is that in the during agenda view with the mayor on Monday morning, um, I, I understood the um, expectation was that he was hoping that the ARPA committee would provide some direction as to you know, the basic question, number one, should we pursue this grant and the, these grants? And then number two, is the, is the ARPA committee, you know, do, do you feel that it's, that you're supportive of potentially um, providing the match for the grants if needed? And if not, you know, and then figuring out how to do that would probably be the question for Thursday night. But, uh, the, the, the other direction I understood is that, you know, should there be a blue sheet submitted um, for Thursday night's meeting so that um, with potentially a resolution so that um, we have um, some kind of affirmative statement to provide the state when we submit the grant um, that, um, that there's commission support for, for moving forward. So, so, yeah. I think the, um, this again, I'm just kind of speaking for me and then people can agree or disagree and that can give us sort of our poll. But um, I think if we had to make the match with ARPA dollars, I think we'd rather do that than not get this money. <laughs> We're, I mean, clearly we wanna, we wanna leverage this opportunity. So when it comes down to it, I think we do it if we have to. Um, I don't expect that the commission is gonna have an appetite to use ARPA dollars. I think that they're gonna probably look at your advice, Kathleen, and the interest rates and, and you know, it kind of take that advice to bond it. Um, but um, I think it's also important to point out if we use ARPA dollars for the match, then those are ARPA dollars we, we can't spend elsewhere. And there are other ARPA projects that we wouldn't be able to bond because they don't meet the requirements for bonding. So I think my message to the commission, and I could certainly speak on this Thursday is, yeah, if absolutely necessary, we can consider, you know, we, we would use that ARPA money for match, but that I don't think that's the best option um, because both there is a bonding opportunity and it takes money away from our ARPA projects that potentially couldn't be bonded. Commissioner Townsend? I uh, just wanted to agree, Madam Chair, with your succinctly and clearly put statement right there. Uh, there, there are other projects that I'm sure will come before us competing for ARPA dollars that um, would not qualify here. I mean, we could do more with ARPA dollars uh, in other areas. So um, I just agree with your statement there. Um, and in terms of the resolution, I don't know that would be coming from, I guess the whole Commission has not had the chance to weigh in on this, so I'm not sure about that, but uh, I agree with your statement wholeheartedly about the preference for how to fund this if we move forward with this project, with the base grant, and, and certainly why wouldn't we? So thank you. Yeah, the, the, uh, so the, the question is the blue sheet would be um, an opportunity for the commission to actually take action on it. So. 
And just by the way, if we were only to bond just the Indian Springs amount, it, the annual debt service would be 171,000 a year. So very affordable. Alan, go ahead. And not to prolong this, I know we've got other topics, but are there, I guess, are there any of these four that commissioners are, you know, before we get to Thursday say, yeah, you know, either not interested or it's, you know, not, not baked enough, recognizing that this is all happening fast, but it's not baked enough. And so let's, you know, come back to that when it's a little more fully baked, um, you know, th that would help staff, I think, coming into Thursday as well, whether we, you know, take the approach and say, let's just go with all four and see what happens or prioritize it down to, you know, a top two or, you know, there's a couple of different ways to, to come at this, I think. Commissioner Townsend. I was hoping while he was asking that question, we could see those four again. <laughs> it's kind of put, taken down pretty quickly. Here they are again. <laughs> but the, maybe the with the money. Money, yeah. I don't know if staff has a, Melissa, you and the team that's been working on this have a, a ranking or a you know, prioritization on this or? Yeah, they're, they're ranked. They're listed. Yeah, they're they're listed, listed as in listed. Okay, in priority order. Yeah. Just have to be there for that. Uh, this is Jeff Fisher. If if the commissioners would also like to ask you some analysis, maybe similar to what we do in the CMIP scoring and ranking process, I don't know that that's been done on these, and we can certainly do that. One one of those criteria in particular would be the return on investment kind of analysis. I think that would be super helpful for Thursday. Um, Commissioner Townsend, did you have additional comments before I jump to Commissioner Davis? Well, thank you. Uh, well, with the recommendations just made uh, about the return on investment, other at this point, I would be in favor of moving them all forward and letting uh, the board as a whole, you know, have their comment with that additional analysis. I think that would probably be the fairer thing. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know. I'm biased, so I want in Springs. <laughs> but, um, uh, I think these are all great projects. And um, I, I, I mean, we can't really go wrong here. Um, I do think that along with that scoring piece, we do need to think about equity and think about, you know, the investment in the communities that maybe have not had as much uh, 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 infrastructure investment in the past. And that's not to say that we should not do state in the Village Parkway, but it is to say that I think, you know, especially on the east side in our distressed census tracts, we do need to think about the impact that this will have in, in the economic revitalization of those areas that have not had those opportunities. in Armordale and in Indian Springs and, and levees and all those, I think they definitely qualify. I'm not saying to move state and those frankly less, but I am saying that equity as well as return on investment should be uh, prioritized. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bynum. Thanks, I'll try to make this the last comment on this, but um, you know, just kind of going back to Indian Springs, two, two things. It is in an opportunity zone. Seems like that might be another benefit. And I'm the incoming board chair at KCATA. However, I do not know the answer to my own question, but is there the possibility that there are federal stimulus dollars also available through Ride KC, KCATA? Uh, I think that's the next one. This is Melissa that we're going to have to dive into. That's why um, I think okay. Erica was saying we have more work to do, but I do think there's some opportunity there working with Justice and his team in particular when it comes to that transit center. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right. 
we do need to go ahead. If we are going to get to our other agenda items at all, we've got to move ahead. But this has been really good discussion. I appreciate the flexibility of this committee and jamming this into our agenda and the flexibility of staff and, and letting us jam this into our agenda um, so we could give some feedback before Thursday night's meeting. But I think we are prepared to move ahead, which I think um, takes us to a discussion of stormwater needs. Uh, wastewater and stormwater needs. I'm going to pass this off to the Public Works Department. And I'll, I'll just navigate if that's all right. We have trouble with the mute. We'll go ahead and uh, ask Sarah Schaefer to jump in and highlight these things and Trenton focus on the Trenton, you're up first. Oh, we're doing wastewater first. All right, we're doing Trenton first. I just, oh, what do you want to do first? We're good. I think we're going to do wastewater first. So okay. You're well, it's the presentation the, the next next slide. Slide. Okay. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Kathleen, can you move to the next slide, please? Here we go. Thank you. So I don't, I don't know how much detail we want to go down in each one of these, but they're just different project areas down in um, Jersey Creek um, that are, are included as part of our federal consent decree, which is our 25 year plan, of course, that we have to do all these, these projects down there. Um, by and large, they're, they're just different areas where we're going to go in and do sewer separations. And, and, and other technologies, potentially green infrastructure to reduce the overflow volume. So I don't, I don't know that it's, I don't know if it merits going through each and every one of them in detail, although I'm happy to. Um, the first one listed there is one of our overflow points numbered 14, and, and that's pretty much all it is, it's just separations on that one. Um, 15 and 81 is this next one. I guess that first one was 7.7 .7 million. The second, the next one is for uh, 15 and 81 is a two million investment, and then um, the third one listed here is 16, and and that's a four million dollar investment. I think on the next page, if you can go to the next one, there might be a little bit more uniqueness to some of them. Yeah, um, so 17 and 55, the first and third one listed here are, are basically more separations, although. That last one is, is, a, is a large investment, seven, over 17 million. The one in the middle there, the uh, CSO 19, that one's a little bit different um, in that that includes Big 11 Lake and Waterway Park area. And so there's a there's a phase one project that's already kind of started in that area. And we, we talked about that um, the other night on the CMIP presentation and then um, and then there's a follow on phase two that would come up to do separation and, and some more green infrastructure opportunities. And so the total between the two phases on that one is the 15.7 million that's listed. So I know that was kind of fast. There, I don't know if there's anything real exciting or if anyone has any specific questions, but happy to answer any if there are some. So um, I think my question in looking at these, like you said, that to a novice, they all sort of look like the same thing, but with different dollar amounts attached. Is, is one dependent on the other? Like, do they need to go in an order? Because if we were gonna fund one or one or more of these with ARPA and there's an order they should go in or, or a section that makes sense to do first, we would wanna know that as we're picking and choosing. You know, it'd be easy for us to say, we wanna do the cheapest one. <laughs> but if for the cheapest one to be effective, you really need to do the other ones before it, that would be important for us to know. Yeah, there's some flexibility in the, in the timeline. I guess, you know, we're partnering on them with the stormwater piece, and then they are listed out in a timeline schedule as well with in our consent decree with EPA. So we do have some flexibility. If there was a reason to do it, it doesn't really matter what order we do them in. If there was an opportunity, we could definitely um, seize that opportunity, and then we just have to work through the process of the EPA. And there's no dependencies? No, yeah. not really. They're basically all independent, um, and 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 part of the reason we're doing all this too is just infrastructure renewal. You guys have all heard that one. Perfect. Thanks. That answers my question, Commissioner Davis. Yeah, um, and someone that is is 
somewhat a novice here. Um, <laughs> and just to bring some decisiveness, because I know we're, we're doing a lot and, and there's a lot going on. But I would propose as we do Park Drive, uh, Wyandotte High, Lombardi, and combined sewer separation 1581 for Jersey Creek Basin. Um, I don't know what the rough numbers, I think we're looking at roughly 6 million, give or take. Um, again, it, it's not everything, but it would uh, um, help those areas and those neighborhoods that are in need. Um, it also would not break the bank for ARPA, and these investments would last well beyond the money is gone. Um, I don't know if other folks are tied to this uh, specific things or if there are other projects that are tied in, um, but I'm just going to put that out there. Can you list those again, Commissioner Davis? Yeah, so uh, Wine Dot High uh, Lombardi, I think it was 3.4. Um, the other one was Combined Sewer Separation 1581 Jersey Creek Basin. And the last one was Park Drive. And uh, committee, two of those that uh, Commissioner Davis just listed are stormwater projects, which I believe we'll go over a little bit in more detail here um, in the next few slides. Thanks. OK, Commissioner Townsend. Thank you. Um, did I hear the speaker say that uh, our or are some or all of these projects part of the consent, consent decree that we entered into? And does that put a timeline on getting all of them done? Um, all the wastewater projects listed here are indeed listed in the, in the consent decree. Um, the timeline that we're proposing here meet, meets those timelines. It actually would accelerate them just a just a touch. What is the outermost timeline for compliance? The outermost um, for this consent decree is to have all this done um, prior to 2032. Okay, so all of these at some point have to be done. Correct. Can each of these stand alone? And by then I mean, do you? Would you make a professional recommendation that a series of them be done together to complement each other? If you get what I'm what I'm asking here, they're independent areas, so they're okay. really not relying on the other. They can be done in conjunction with one another for economies of scale. Mm -hmm. if, if that's what you're asking, but but, yeah. but they don't rely one doesn't rely on the next one to for to to be effective. Are there two or three? benefit from doing together. Okay. Just just by getting maybe a better better pricing. I mean maybe from economy or two or three that are just logistically advantageous to get together. I think that was one of the yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think the, the bigger the project, probably the better price we get, but I don't know that in an area it doesn't really matter. Okay, but as projects, they stand alone. One isn't really dependent or interdependent on the other. Per correct. Okay, all right. Of course, if we, um, bought, if we uh, you know, if we, we don't have to pay interest costs if we use this money on wastewater um, in, instead of bonding it, because typically wastewater construction is, is um, done with the bond financing, so. Okay. Where so, but uh, wastewater has a fee structure in place that would allow for not only to pay for these projects, but to also pay the interest. Whereas stormwater, because of its current fee structure, has no uh, revenue source to support those those uh, stormwater needs, other than maybe the, this federal money. So. But, would we? Would it uh, m maybe be helpful for us to highlight the stormwater and then come back to general mm -hmm. conversation? 
I was going to suggest that I think that we should jump to the stormwater and then loop back and discuss them as a whole. Okay. So the following um, components of stormwater that we are presenting, they either build upon existing um, infrastructure that uh, has working businesses and economic opportunity around them, or they are building upon um, the CSO um, work that has been or will be completed. So our first three projects that we have up here, these are directly related to um, what we would call kind of that economic infrastructure. We've got uh, things going on in these areas and we need to continue to support those things occurring. So we have our stormwater infrastructure in Argentine, our Jersey Creek improvements in the Fairfax area and the Muncie drainage improvements, uh, which include some upsizing uh, to existing systems to mitigate the risk to those current homeowners during our small but now frequent rain events. Um, those investments are, are listed um, with those particular projects. Um, and then the next three projects, if you'll go ahead and, and move the slide forward, these are directly related to our CSO areas. They are green infrastructure to address um, our treatment and or capacity issues in these particular locations. So we have the Wyandotte High Lombardi Drive area, the green infrastructure at 8th Street Park that supports our juvenile justice center um, design components, and then our green infrastructure for Park Drive within Track 422. Those particular investment um, amounts are also listed there uh, as, as we would anticipate them. So these six projects, again, have been brought to you. They are not dependent upon anything that um, Trenton has indicated. They have, uh, they fully support either existing or um, previously conducted work um, in these particular areas. On the uh, I was just Jeff Fisher, uh, if I might speak real quick to the 8th Street Park. That is something that's been on our radar for a little while. Sarah mentioned it was uh, that was conceptualized when we started the juvenile uh, center and the parking lot down by Memorial Hall. And um, the vision was that that existing park that I don't believe is used very little could become a place where people can, you know, gather and maybe it's a wet surface sort of feature with green infrastructure and walking around Actually, it. the second picture down. Yeah, it's that second uh, second visual on the slide there. It really does, I think, it's a small area, but it has great potential to be a place for people to appreciate. So the, the question that was previously asked on, on which, which projects, if we were to recommend packaging and partnering. So um, Kathleen, um, mentioned that, you know, while stormwater doesn't necessarily have um, the financial to support its own debt, if we were to recommend four projects within these areas together, it would be the Lombardi High um, Drive area with the CSO 50 and 55. CSO 55, and then the 8th Street Park because it, it um, completes that support of infrastructure investment and CSO work that was done right here in downtown. So 9.5 million, 9.6 million. Of course, we'd love, we'd love all the projects to be done, but yes, those are the maybe the top four priority recommendations. Say those again. I think I might have been. I'm like trying to type your list as you're talking, and <laughs> I must have missed something because I didn't come up with the same number that <laughs> Kathleen. Well, uh, this uh, did you say this 3.3 and then the 6.2? Is that what you said? I'm sorry, one, one more time. When you recommended, you meant recommend. Oh. Just wind up. Okay. Yeah, and I and I think I misstated a CSO because I'm so used to putting some of these things together. But it's the uh, Lombardi Drive uh, stormwater project with CSO 55, uh, and it is where's the CSO 55? Where's that one? CSO 55 is the combined sewer separation in Jersey Creek Basin for 17.65 million. Oh, so it's our largest and. 
And why I said two numbers together is usually we talk about those two together with that large number. So, um, and then the 8th Street Park. So technically on these on this slide deck, it's three projects. I apologize for that that confusion. So uh, where's the, the, I'm sorry. So which one is it, the, this one here, the 7.7 .7 million? Nope, so one more slide down. So combined okay. sewer separation, ah, 17. five, five, yes. I, so it's this one here at the top for four million? At the, at the, at the bottom for 17.65 oh. oh. million. I combined just, sewer separation, five, five, 55, yep. Got it, got it. All right, Double nickel. So, are, are any of these covered under WIFIA? Any of these proposals yes. are they covered? Yes, they are. This, and this is current time. time. I'm going to go back and remind us again of my conversation last night. That's as proposed. However, with the rate the way it's set, which is fine. I, I don't have a dog in this fight. Sure. That will not all be able to be done. Um, is my understanding. There will be changes in what would be a will cover, um, which is a significant reduction. And Sarah, I don't know what you were all thinking um, of leaving in when you said about 15% of it would be left for stormwater, so. It would be the 8th Street Park is uh, approximately what we anticipate moving forward with the stormwater components um, if we had to reduce the stormwater program. Okay, so H and that's Street because Park. it would directly support existing infrastructure and CSO separation that occurred downtown for one of our municipal buildings. Okay, uh, to, again, to be chair, to be somewhat decisive here, I think the three that was proposed economically, financially, and just given, I mean, we have a lot of issues. There's going to be a lot of benefit, but I know that I mean, we still have a lot that we needed to to cover here, and we have. And homelessness and nonprofit applicants and a lot of other things. I think it would be good for us to to be decisive here, and and I think the three that I proposed are doable, economically feasible, and does not break the bank and allows us to move on to other priorities. I don't know that I feel any pressure for us to make a decision today because we don't know how much money we want to give to other things. <laughs> so I don't know that we want to say we're going to pick these three that are lower cost. We don't know what the other buckets, we have no idea what we might want to provide to those other buckets. So I think, you know, I'd, I'd rather us kind of wait to look at that whole package and say, okay, if we're going to put some bucket in the housing and homelessness, what's that number going to be? What's the infrastructure number going to be and kind of look at how that looks as a package. So I don't want us to feel like we must choose three projects today. Um, but staff is here to answer questions that might lead us to that conclusion. Um, after we sort of see more holistically what what is available for funding. Um, Commissioner Townsend. Thanks, Madam Chair. I'm glad you made that statement because right now I will admit to being just totally confused. What I would <laughs> prefer to do is just, I'm gonna print all these off, look, that, look at them offline and follow up. And then at what point do we envision going back to this question about which one of these, what, what is the, the takeaway from today? These are, I think some are gonna come back with some uh, return on investment information and, and something else. So. Um, Good idea. Yeah. What, what are we trying to get out of this just today? I don't know that maybe saying this one, this one, and this one today might be the best, but I know ultimately we're going to be called upon to, to make that determination. But, well, we, we just wanted to provide more information, which is what you asked us um, okay. for each project. That's, that's what I was hoping for. Yeah, I think um, if, if staff could provide perhaps in our team's group, um, sort of an outline of those those that they've recommended that I've typed here quickly um, in a Word document, if they could provide the outline of the three that they're recommending and why, I think that would be helpful. So we can all refer back to that as we are looking at this information in the future. Um, okay. And then I think I think my big question is, is probably, it maybe may go to Commissioner Townsend feeling confused as well, is sort of what is that in, in interaction with the WIFIA 
and how do we need to weigh that into our decision? Like we understand maybe not everything gets done with the WIFIA, but something is getting done with the WIFIA or can we use this money to match with the WIFIA? Like what does that interaction look like and how should that or could that affect what makes the most sense here? So um, I'm gonna let Commissioner McKiernan go, but that I think is the question in my mind. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm going to um, uh, concur with Commissioner Townsend that I'm confused at the moment as I look at this because I'm having a hard time reconciling the quote, air quotes, stormwater projects that have just been presented here with the other set that were being considered when we were considering the enterprise fund and the increases in fees that would be need to be necessary to accomplish upgrades to our stormwater system. These seem to be different projects than the ones that were prioritized in our earlier discussion. So while I agree, 8th Street Park is the lowest point in Wyandotte County and it fills up every time it thinks about raining outside, I'm not sure exactly how I uh, reconcile this with our previous presentations and discussions on stormwater. So I'm just going to need a little bit more time to, to catch up. Um, As Commissioner Markley suggested, we can we can produce that document that helps the, the committee. That clarity. Should we move over to the facilities review? I think so. I appreciate it. Um, I, I would appreciate that sort of document or, or presentation or additional information being produced. And um, we'll look for that uh, team. We'll look for that in our teams. Um, to help us move forward with a recommendation for stormwater wastewater. Let's move on to facilities so we can try to cram everything in here today. <laughs> can you see my screen? Yes, uh, Kathleen, John Kelly here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn this over. Greg has been working with Amoresco for the last, uh, you know, since we knew that some ARPA funding and the CARES dollar. So, I'm going to let him go over the uh, presentation here, and he's going to touch a little bit on parks as well. And then we're going to have Angel uh, help on uh, some of the follow-up questions that you guys may have when we get to parks and recs. Go ahead, Greg. Thank you, John. And uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, and uh, fellow administration and staff. Uh, Kathleen, could you uh, go back to the first slide, please? It's a little benign, but I do want to make a, the first slide. Yes, yeah, so I do want to make an introduction uh, for those that may not be as familiar and have heard about Amoresco. Amoresco was employed with by the Unified Government back uh, in 2018. They are a building solutions group with a focus on deferred facility maintenance and the solutions necessary to bring about the equitable sustainability of our facility inventory. And uh, not only are they employed with the Unified Government, but they are also contracted with the state of Kansas. They specialize in the focus of reducing energy consumption and increased operational efficiencies. They are also currently employed by the Unified Government doing the tiering study that is looking at the overall footprint of the Unified Government and how we might be able to consolidate our services, uh, maybe apply extra efficiencies to those services and uh, reduce our overall carbon and uh, capital footprint. And so with that said, uh, they have uh, uh, done a, a complete introspective uh, view of the facility inventory of the unified government. And now you can go to the next slide, slide Kathleen. And this is the uh, outcome of that and the picture of the unified government as we look at our facility inventory and our deferred maintenance in, uh, uh, deferred maintenance cost that is piling up with us. These are urgent and high needs that need to be done now. I will tell you, as you look at this high vertical graph, that is a 2021 slide. We are currently in 2022, and that were, there's a, a little bit of addition there. However, I'm not going to get into weeds about this too much. Uh, we've been doing some work around town, especially as the health department, as uh, some know, so the added of those two years is going to be a zero out, essentially. Uh, we also do quite a bit of work on uh, parking lots that aren't realized in this slide yet. So needless to say, we can assume that we have a good $91.5 million of deferred maintenance that needs to occur in our uh, inventory. And it's broken down in this slide 
by city and county. And if you go to the next slide, please. This is a breakdown of our uh, proposal of the ARPA funds as we are submitting to the committee now. Of course, when the discussion of ARPA came about and uh, there was the sum $80 million, and I suppose everybody uh, was asking their uh, particular divisions or departments uh, what their thoughts were. Of course, buildings and logistics was like, sure, we'll take it. You know, that 80 million of course, uh, against our 91.5 million, that would bring us about to uh, areas of sustainability and, and uh, forge a path forward that would be equitable and obtainable for the unified government. Of course, there's many other needs and we have to uh, put our request in. And so uh, along with everybody else, and there's many considerations that I know you will take. Having said that, we had gone back and forth and had uh, made a deliberate analysis of what we had and what we really thought that we need currently at this time. And that's what is reflected in this slide. Please go back to the other slide. I'm gonna uh, Sorry. back one more. I'm gonna uh, yeah, enumerate on this just a little needs. bit more. Uh, so we've broken this uh, need down into the two areas, the city and the county and about 8.5 for the city and about 6.2 realized for the county. And we've dispersed that over an area of buildings that we believe critical to the inventory of the unified government. Even if the tiering study comes back and says that we're gonna reduce uh, a, our footprint and eliminate this building or that building, we feel that all of these are equitably assigned so that there is an advantage to that, whether we put the building on the market or, uh, dispose of it in some other way, or in fact, end up keeping it. Okay, so now you can go to that next slide, if you would. Again, that 14.6 million ARPA, is, as uh, we have identified, that can make approximately a 16% one-time reduction in our deferred maintenance backlog. And I could tell you, uh, the CMIP process that we have in place now, currently a five-year outlook, would assign a, approximately another 14 million to that. Uh, we have hopes in consolidating that time schedule uh, from five years to three years. So we could say that in, uh, we would have an opportunity to do a three or four year impact of approximately $30 million to our deferred maintenance schedule. Uh, and then when we consider our uh, uh, operational process as it is now with about a million dollars a year uh, uh, dedicated to our parking lots, and other various things that we can do, we can see that this is a force multiplier and we can accelerate our attack on this backlog of uh, work that has to be done. We believe this is very sustainable and we believe it's very equitable and we believe that uh, it has the opportunity to capture what we would like to see and also leave uh, uh, many slices of the pie for others as well. Okay, next. So to dive in on this, we want to accentuate a couple of uh, projects that we have outlined. And I'm gonna focus in on one here on the city side, of course, City Hall. And the next slide is gonna be uh, focused on the courthouse. City Hall built in 1971, approximately 200,000 square feet. The current replacement value is somewhere around $60 million. The total deferred maintenance on City Hall is $8.8 .8 million. That's our total need as we see it right now. Again, these are 2021 uh, uh, figures and there would be a slight alteration to that, but essentially this is the conversation. 8.3 million is high priority deferral. 15.6 uh, is the facility condition act, uh, index. And uh, I, I can explain that a little bit later if we need. Uh, next slide, please. This is a listing of that $8.8 .8 million. It breaks down into two categories uh, that are provided by, by the ARPA. Uh, category A, of course, being the HVAC, uh, indoor air quality, high priority items, and then category C, revenue loss, deferred maintenance programs that we have identified <clears throat> and the amounts attributed to each. Category A, of course, about 5.5 million. Category C, uh, rounding near 3 million. Next slide, please. So you see, we're asking for $4.7 million, but we have an $8 million or $8.8 .8 million need. Uh, so why is that? 
Well, it's because we know that there are more slices of the pie out there and we have to be realistic about the minimalized approach that we could take to get the best bang for our buck. And, and, and as I say, be a force multiplier to sustain the operations at this particular building. City Hall in the recent years has received windows as a treatment. We have received uh, a new roof. Uh, we have new chillers, we have new boilers, but what we don't have is atmospheric control. Levert Murray in his last, in the last meeting uh, said something that was near and dear to my heart. I wish he was here to see this and I, I hope uh, he hears about this later on. He was curious about the processes when we go about shopping about these things. How is it we do this? Are we looking for Chevrolets or are we looking for the Lexus? And I could tell you that Buildings and Logistics has made a philosophical determination in years past not to always and maybe never go look for that Lexus. It, it almost never uh, seems to make the best sense. When we shop around, let's say, for an air conditioning system for a building such as this, of course, we look at many vendors and all of them have an advertised uh, energy savings of such and such. But then there'll be the one or two that come along and say, look, for a little bit more, I can advertise a 5% savings over my competitors. And it sounds very good. However, in order to achieve those, you almost have to recreate lab environments. It is almost uh, impossible in the field. Uh, the technical support requires long-term maintenance agreements, which are very expensive. And I could tell you those short order uh, high-end uh, value uh, objects are usually not in the industry very long. So the ability to sustain technical support, even with the company that is the proprietor of that equipment is difficult. And not to mention when you try to uh, take care of a lot of this leveraged uh, repairs yourself internally because you save so much money operationally. So we tend to go for that Chevy type approach. And I could tell you uh, one example of that right now is the Metasys control system that we currently have is a proprietary uh, uh, owner by Johnson Control Industries, and it's very complex and it's very expensive. And we are moving away from that to another sub-level Johnson Control Industry uh, command and control software system that is industry-wide, uses the common BACnet language, and is going to be common and serviceable in the industry for some say up to 50 years. So the sustainability approach that we take in all these matters is at the forefront of our thinking because we know no matter what the situation, if we get these once in a lifetime opportunities like ARPA or we're struggling through the annual process of the budget, whatever it is, we must take acute care at the dollar that we spend. So this is why I wanted to home in on this and you see this disparity from the amount that we really need to the amount that we're asking for, because we have determined that these minimal amounts are absolutely acute and necessary for us to continue forward as we had hoped. Uh, next slide, please. Courthouse, same thing. Uh, this is going to be our example for the county side. The courthouse was built in 1925, 180,000 square feet. Also, you know, it's a bit of a pride and joy as City Hall is. They're uh, uh, sort of staple objects in the community. Uh, it's on the historical uh, uh, land register for the federal government in the state of Kansas. Its replacement value would be $46 million, but its intrinsic value may be incalculable. It kind of, I guess, depends on your perspective. Uh, we take great pride in this. And uh, of course, Memorial Hall is very similar in that uh, category. And so this is what we're looking at here. We've got a total deferred maintenance of $10.55 million, uh, high priority of 9.45, and the facility condition index is 22.6. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So this is the listing of that category of high uh, deferred maintenance that we have for the courthouse. Uh, this listing, and if you can dig in this deeper, and of course, we can always answer any of the questions that you might have concerning this. Next slide, please. So, we are asking for $2.5 million as opposed to, you know, the uh, enumerated uh, near $9 million. This is to support the upcoming project 
that is slated to begin later this year at the court, county courthouse. This project is going to include a variety of items uh, which uh, are HVAC. We are going to a new VRF uh, uh, commercial grade system uh, that really is going to take us into the future. We consider trying to uh, bring the old system back to life, but actually became more uh, uh, equitable this way financially for us to go to the new technology. So we took that opportunity. Uh, we're going to do roof masonry work, fire notification and suppression, windows and doors, and plumbing. So this building is going to be rejuvenated. And one of the reasons why I said our five-year plan, hope we hope to consolidate to the three-year plan, is because anybody that's lived anywhere has had work done on their street, and that street gets repaired, and six months or a year later, uh, somebody's back tearing up the street doing the work again. We don't want to burden the courthouse uh, with this type of approach for the amount of work that's about to be done. Uh, it has not seen any great maintenance in quite some period of time. And uh, we have a plan along with Amoresco to equitably come in here in the minimal amount of time necessary to do these things and renew, rejuvenate this building. And uh, we believe that we can uh, beat the 100 year uh, mark on this and have it as a pride and joy for a 100 year celebration. So air handling, tuck pointing, masonry, building envelope, exterior restoration, all of these scenes, all of these kinds of seem together in this one package, doesn't it? The HVAC is gonna have to penetrate the roof. The roof needs to be replaced anyways. And as we're peeling back the roof, we're find, finding deteriorated masonry uh, uh, areas. Matter of fact, uh, quite extensively so. So the 2.5 is critical to this funding of this as we're experiencing the recent uh, uh, material escalation in cost with the supply chain interruptions. I believe that the Fed and everybody's convinced now that the uh, inflationary period we are in is no longer going to be considered transitory, but probably going to be in our future for quite some time. If that's the case, then we can figure that this inflationary uh, 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 time frame that we're in will last for the next three to five years minimum. That would be my opinion, and I, I would believe that most people would concur with that. Having said that, this would ensure that would, we would be able to equitably, equitably uh, bring home this project along with the other projects uh, listed in our request for county structures. Lastly, the mayor, you, yes, you can go to the next uh, slide. The mayor had asked John Kelly to talk a little bit about the Reardon Center. And so we know there's great interest with that. We wanted to give you a little bit of a high and medium altitude view of the Reardon Center. Of course, we can get into the micro level inspection at that at, at any time. So uh, Reardon Center built in 1981, approximately 77,000 square feet with a current replacement value of $23.7 million. The total deferred maintenance on this is 6.5 million. I will tell you these are 2018 or 17 figures. Uh, however, the inflationary addition to those for the last few years probably wouldn't be extraordinarily high. But from this point forward, I can tell you this would, the inflation would be a bit of an ex, uh, uh, exponential, you know, uh, value to that. Um, the facility condition index is 27.6, which is uh, actually quite high. Next slide, please. This is a breakdown of the deferred maintenance <clears throat> as known and studied and equitized by Amoresco. And so this is the complete list as we know it now. Of course, I know there was another, excuse me, architectural and engineering study that John had passed on to the mayor, and maybe many of you have seen that. Most of those will coincide. I would not doubt that uh, there would be, uh, you know, little idiosyncratic differences between the two studies, as uh, you know, these aren't really general topical inspections, but you know, to get to nth degree type of inspection is really another story overall. These things were meant to give us an indication of what it is we might expect to spend if we were to rejuvenate or rehab any of these facilities. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna to go to the uh, parks and recreation needs. Uh, we're gonna focus in on uh, six particular uh, facilities, the Joey e. Mayo, Ar Armadale, Bethany, Beatrice Lee, Kensington, and the Parkwood upper level. I believe the map, uh, uh, well, unfortunately, it's not very high, but I believe it is in all these uh, districts that are um, 
uh, conducive to the type of spending we're looking to do. The total ARPA amount of spending to this, if you look at the lower part of the slide uh, to the left, is 5.3 million total. 1.6 of that is to air handling and uh, 3.7 of that remaining eligibility to uh, uh, for the deferred maintenance. Of course, these are uh, fit into two ARPA categories. I know there's a little talk about final rule and what recreation needs is. Our thoughts are that there's a good possibility all of this would be eligible. However, that's gonna be up to Kathleen and the, uh, the body to make that final determination as you will be the experts and uh, have closer attention to detail in that. Next slide, please. This is also a vertical bar chart, <clears throat> excuse me, representation of the deferred maintenance. Uh, again, this is a, the tall one is the 2021. That's the accumulated deferred maintenance from all years past up until that time. And each one of those little bars will be added as the successive year uh, comes onto that if nothing is done. And if I memory serves me correctly as assisting uh, Angel and Jack in some of their endeavors. I think uh, typically they receive about $150,000 a year operationally to address their deferred maintenance uh, backlog on their recreational centers. And I believe that the Amoresco study uh, indicates that they probably need 1.5 million to, uh, 10, uh, to 2 million a year to catch up. If you consider uh, the work that needs to be down, uh, done now and future work to be done. So this again is a one-time opportunity to relieve her operational um, you know, uh, uh, weights so that she can employ these type of uh, um, programs that are more dedicated and probably bring about higher immediate intrinsic value to the community as children are able to take advantage of after school type of programs and all that might be offered there. So it's really a juxtaposed view of, do we offer programming if we're able to afford it to the general community or do we cut grass or do other things that are gonna keep the buildings and our uh, sites in structure, but functionally be limited in their area of support to the community. Finally, this slide shows the category A and C of the uh, breakdown, uh, the air handling, as you see, uh, I believe Kathleen added this is very helpful. And then uh, category C, and then that which you deem uh, appropriate or eligible for use as the final rule considerations come to light. And having said that, I think that is that. And if you have any questions, John or I would be happy to answer. John has his hand up, so <laughs> he might have the questions, I'll let him go. Well, I just, I wanted to bring, uh, attention that Angel is on the call today. <clears throat> if we do have questions, uh, Angel and Greg have been working over the last week kind of for today's presentation. And the one thing that I want to point out, you know, uh, Angel, when we had our uh, meeting last week, she talked about a 7.8 million ask for ARPA funds. And as today we present it, as Greg went through, that number's changed. And the only reason I want to bring it to everybody's attention why the numbers change is because when the proposed numbers that Angel was working with, that was for a five-year uh, plan and all of our other requests for ARPA with the deferred maintenance and building costs was a one-year. So we just aligned parks and recs facilities with the same. So that's why you see a reduction in that ask from her initial five-year to the one-year that reduces that 7.8 down to the five a million dollars. So I just wanted to make sure I made mention of that if anybody had any questions. And then just one key thing is, you know, uh, facilities director that, you know, we're coming to you as the subcommittee to look and ask for these things that we're telling you with our expertise, these are the things that we need for facilities that we really think that we, uh, you know, you know, time of, is of the essence, so to speak. And when Greg talks about leveraging or I'm talking about leveraging a project that really that the Wyandotte County Courthouse is big for that ask and I just want to make sure I uh, emphasize that to everybody on this call that's a uh, as the numbers start to move uh, north of us with past budget dollars for that particular project for HVAC and roof project that we're going to need these funds to get that project done and so like I said I just I appreciate everybody's time if you guys have any questions for either uh, uh, me or Angel, we're both here for any questions. 
Angel, I feel like we should have put you first in the agenda today because every time we're running up against the end of our agenda, but please um, take the floor and, and add anything that you would like and uh, talk to us about parks. <laughs> yes, thank you, Commissioner Markley and um, all other commissioners on the standing committee. Appreciate your time. And um, John's absolutely right. I did want to make sure that I um, clear any questions up about um, the number I we shoot we showed last week. It was for a five year request, and so this did align better. Um, so today, you know, for Parks and Recreation, we we did just present the um, infrastructure or rec center side of things, um, and wanted to provide a little bit more detail um, as requested um, from a few commissioners last time on what that broke down to for each center. So I'm happy to take any questions. Um, again, even just the 2.1 million we received from Air CARES Act, I believe 1.5 of that was the HVAC um, systems for four gymnasiums has really moved um, forward a lot of opportunities for programming. Um, but unfortunately that was just the tip of our needs for our rec centers. And um, you know, this, like uh, Greg mentioned, would certainly point us in the right direction to start um, being able to offer our spaces um, for more use. Thanks so much, Angel. So we are up against the end of our time um, and I'm gonna make two asks, one to staff and one to the commissioners. So staff, could you take all of the um, proposals, the proposed projects, I will say both from the facility side, the park side, the stormwater and the wastewater side, can you put all of those into like an Excel sheet so that the committee can see all of the sort of items and their cost. Um, commissioners, I would like you to spend a little time then with that Excel sheet and um, just play with those numbers a little bit. And if you're willing, send, send me over what you come up with um, as what you would propose that we fund with our, let's call it the infrastructure bucket. And then I'll give me a chance as chair to kind of look and see if there are similarities and start to bring us to a place where maybe we have some agreement on specific projects or specific groupings of projects. So um, a little bit of homework for the commissioners, spend a little time with all those projects. We heard from Commissioner Davis today on, on sort of the wastewater stormwater side, but I'd just like to hear from each of you um, what you think that package might look like and what you would maybe propose if you were um, king of the world. And like I said, if you'll get that to me in advance of our next meeting, I'm gonna try to look and see if I can find those similarities to try to move us forward um, a little quicker. Commissioner Bynum. Thank you, just a couple questions. On a spreadsheet like that, Chair, if we could be provided uh, the remaining ARPA dollars, county and city, and then if it's appropriate, the dollars that we're holding in revenue recovery. Okay. Um, just uh, hey, really by the way, me I, just, those... I just did an update of that and it's in the folder, but I'll send you an email uh, with the link. Yeah. Okay. And you gave us a link to the Teams folder with all the documents in it. So you're saying there's a document in there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and if that could be just highlighted on this spreadsheet, so that okay. as I'm doing my math, got I've got that in front of me. And then my second question is, in the early part of today, when we were on the CSO projects, um, I don't think we have those slides in teams folders. I don't know if today's slides are in the teams folder. Yes, yes they are. All of them. I, yeah. I, I looked at the slide presentation uh, marked today's date, wastewater, stormwater. Are you saying those slides are in there? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now the slide that um, Erica presented first, the first presentation wasn't in there until I just put it in there now. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you so much. That's it. Yeah. On the, on the base grant. Yeah. I just put that in there now. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner mm -hmm. Townsend. Thank you. Uh, one ask also that uh, um, for the, um, the Excel, the spreadsheet, the homework that we're to review I found it very helpful um, 
when Mr. Wooten was making his presentation, he showed the deferred maintenance, he showed the Cadillac or the, uh, the Lexus version, but then he also honed in on what the ask was. And okay. so if that can be footnoted on there somehow, and if any of the other uh, presenters had similar uh, types of things, they may have been asking for everything they showed, but if you are presenting one thing, but then you know, making sure we understand what that ask number is, th that would be a helpful bit of information to make sure it's clear on that uh, sheet as well. Thank you. No problem. All right. Any other questions? I, I I sprang this homework assignment on both staff and commission just now, like <laughs> because we were running so short on time, and I want to try to put this forward. So, um, you know, staff, reach out to me if you have any questions, and uh, commissioner, same to you. Uh, but I think it'll just help us get an idea of where we stand and how far apart we are, how close together we are, and um, anything we agree on, we'll just eliminate one thing we have to argue about. So <laughs> we'll just try to move forward a little bit quicker that way. All right. Anything else for the good of the order today? Well, um, just that, you know, I remind everyone that we have a draft uh, web portal uh, or application process document for the web portal for nonprofit and UG applications, as well as sample ex um, questions. Um, that are going to be in the portal. And um, honestly, we can touch on all that at the next week's meeting that's scheduled or about to be scheduled. Yeah. And I would, I would say if people have edits to those, let's get those or, or suggested edits. If you have suggestions or edits, let's get them to Kath Kathleen and I. We'll just say to make it easy, get them to Kathleen and I before yeah. our next meeting. And then yeah. if there are ones that we think need to come to the committee for discussion before final draft, we can kind of figure that out. So look at those documents. They were sent right. to you like Saturday, I think, when yeah. Kathleen was apparently working. <laughs> and look at those documents, oh, wait. Uh, make any edits, make or send any suggestions, and that'll allow us to kind of group all of those edits and suggestions together for one document for review at yeah. the next meeting. And then the other, the other thing I mentioned is that um, we have another presentation of a whole slew of additional grant opportunities that will be due the middle of March. I believe it's middle of March. And that was supposed to be presented. We're missing that um, because we ran out of time. That, that document is in the, uh, in the uh, folder if you wanna see it, um, but um, we can schedule it for the next time around. So. And it dealt with, uh, it starts with the streetlight um, project, but then it goes on and talks about other grants. Okay, um, I think I did say The, the reason we focused on the base grant because the deadline is only 20, 20 days away, so. Okay, and then I wanna confirm something uh, that we were discussing this morning on a separate call. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for the 17th in the evening, and we were planning on that being uh, potentially a meeting for public comment. I think we are going to push, we're going to have that meeting, but I think it's just going to be us. I think we're going to push the public comment meeting one more out because Ashley was concerned that we didn't have enough time to market that. Um, and we don't want to host a public comment meeting without the public knowing that, it, that it's available for comment. So that meeting, I think, is uh, potentially on your calendar. Uh, I think you have it as a hold item for 5.30 p.m. on the 17th. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and host that meeting. It's just going to be a regular committee meeting. And then we will schedule a meeting for the public that gives us, we were a little ambitious, maybe a little aggressive. <laughs> we're going to schedule one a little further out to make sure that we have plenty of time to market that and advertise it so that the public can attend and make comments. So just wanted to make note of that. You'll probably get uh, an update maybe on your calendar about that, but we're still going to meet. The date was held. We're going to go ahead and do it since we had the day in the calendars, but we're going to schedule a separate meeting to give us additional time. Good. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your attention, and thanks for holding over for a couple more minutes for us to wrap up. Um, we're just jamming everything we can in these agendas to try to move us forward, so I appreciate your attentiveness. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.